Hey, uh, welcome to Adcom. My name is Daniel Wang. Uh, I'm the founder and the CEO of Loopring. Uh, today, I would like to talk about Loopring 3.6, uh, which is a, a major release uh, coming this fall. Uh, I want to mention the, the major features as, as well as the challenges that we currently have. Uh, first of all, a little bit background about our team. Uh, we are a small team of 20 people. We have uh, 16 engineers and one UI designer. Uh, so a pretty small team. Uh, we don't have a lot of operation or marketing personnel. So uh, mostly engineering uh, focus. Uh, I'm also from a engineering uh, background. I used to work at Google as a uh, software engineer and tech lead. And then I worked for JD.com, uh, which is an e-commerce company in China, uh, and, and Zhongan Insurance as a, a senior director. So let's just talk about uh, Loopring 3.6. Uh, we are operating a, a protocol uh, which we call Loopring 3.1. So Loopring 3.6 is going to be a uh, improvement over the 3.1 version. We are still using the very same uh, uh, tech stack. We use the same uh, libsnark and the eSnark library. Uh, we also write uh, uh, circuits using C++. So the underlying technologies are still the same. So uh, we, this is the first feature. We don't really require uh, account creation uh, before the account can be able to receive money on layer 2. Uh, previously, this is not uh, possible. Uh, by not allowing, uh, by allowing people to receive money without an uh, account, uh, we can make sure uh, you know, on layer 2, the sender can send uh, Ether or ERC20 token to any address on Ethereum. And we will automatically create an account for the new uh, recipient if uh, he doesn't have an account yet. Um, and then we also increased the overall capacity in the rollup. Previously, we, we can only support 1 million users and uh, 256 tokens. Now we can support up to 4 billion uh, accounts on the, in the same layer 1, uh, layer 2 uh, uh, Merkle tree. Uh, we support 4095 tokens and uh, a limited number of orders. So um, this version, I think, is uh, good enough uh, from a capacity perspective to support uh, the Ethereum Foundation's uh, transfers and tradings uh, in, the, in the coming two years. I think it's sufficient. We also uh, abstract a deposit contract which will handle all the uh, real token transfers for uh, deposits as well as for uh, withdrawals. So uh, this ISAT uh, management contract can be used for a DEX instance to inter interact with DeFi products uh, to earn interest for their users, or can even uh, provide flash loans uh, by uh, utilize those assets deposited uh, by their by the uh, DAX users, so this one uh, abstraction will make layer one interactions or composability uh, much easier. Uh, we also moved most requests to layer two. Previously, uh, withdrawal can do can you know uh, be done on layer one, and then on layer two we process those requests on layer two, but now. Uh, most things are on layer two. So this will further uh, reduce the layer one footprint and make withdrawal much cheaper and much faster because we don't have to uh, wait for layer one confirmation for those requests. But of course, we provide a way to force withdrawals on layer one. So in some rare cases, if the relayer doesn't respond, uh, that doesn't you know uh, honor the layer two withdrawal requests. You know people can still submit the layer one requests to force the the operator or the relayer uh, to do the withdrawal. Uh, 
but uh, most things are right now on layer two, including account creation, including uh, account key update, uh, you know, account uh, re uh, social recoveries, etc. Everything uh, except uh, deposit are on layer two. Uh, <clears throat> the next one is uh, is a major change uh, for the protocol. Previously, we can only uh, best processing one type of requests uh, in in one block. Now, all different types of uh, requests or transactions can be uh, batched together into one single block. So this going, this block uh, can handle all all type of uh, requests, which means uh, those requests no longer to be weighed to be packed in their uh, dedicated type of uh, blocks, uh, which further means a user don't have to wait. Um, so from the user's perspective, uh, all those other uh, transaction uh, latency will be minimized. Uh, for example, uh, withdrawal will be really fast um, compared to the previous version. We now also support uh, multiple ways of uh, authorizing user requests. Or sometimes I say requests, sometimes I say it like uh, uh, layer two transactions. Basically, they are the same thing. Uh, previously, for layer two transactions, we only uh, support EDDSA signature. The EDDSA is a layer two uh, uh, signature scheme. But now, uh, if the account doesn't have any EDDSA key set, then we can use, we can allow the user to sign uh, with their ECDSA key, uh, or um, the owner of the account can approve the transaction on layer two. Uh, sorry, on layer one, so that you know we can check the approval while the block uh, is uh, committed on layer one. Also, we introduced another concept called agent. So the agent, once authorized, can perform. Uh, all kinds of, of uh, operations or, or you know, uh, transact on behalf of the users. Uh, one of the features that, that we implement uh, with agent is this fast withdrawal. Unlike um, the fast withdrawal idea we had uh, with 3.1, which is not really put into production, um, this new fast withdrawal is able to accelerate all the withdrawal requests. So it really just depends on how, how much uh, liquidity we have. If we have enough fund, for example, Ether, then in theory, we can accelerate uh, all the Ether withdrawal uh, by just providing the Ether first and then get the Ether from the user. So in theory, once the withdrawal has been you know, uh, validated, the uh, token transfer from the uh, liquidity provider to the user will be immediate. There's no wait time. There's like zero confirmation time. Uh, so it's in theory the, the fattest withdrawal that we can achieve. So this one will be enabled by default. In the future, uh, after we launch the, the new version, uh, we would like to work with potential liquidity providers to accelerate uh, as many types of tokens as possible. We also enabled uh, another feature called receipt. For withdrawals and transfers, the operator can provide a receipt uh, to the interested party so that the interested party will be, uh, uh, will be uh, assured that this withdrawal will be put into a block. Uh, this is very useful uh, for peer-to-peer uh, -peer payment. So when the merchant receives a receipt from the relayer, he's guaranteed that uh, you know, his money will be uh, received within a certain amount of time. Uh, the, the recipient or the, the merchant will be able to uh, use the receipt on-chain to challenge the, the relayer. And the relayer will have to response with additional data to locate the actual transfer uh, in one of the blocks. Otherwise, uh, the, the operator or the relayer 
will be slashed. So this, of course, can only guarantee um, as much uh, asset as the stake uh, that the operator has put on chain. Oh, this one is a, a, a duplicate. All right, and uh, the tenth feature um, is the uh, secure OTC or peer-to-peer -peer trades. So with 3.1, um, you know, we have to trust the relayer because the relayer you know, has the power to match uh, any order with any other orders, right? But uh, sometimes we really want to tr trade uh, without the help of the relayer. We want to trade um, you know, off the order book. So when that happens, uh, there is a trust issue. With 3.6, uh, you can set uh, a field in your order, say, I only, want to, uh, I, I only want this order of mine to be able to match with another order from a specific address. So the relayer will not be able to match the order with some other, some other orders, uh, some other people's order. Uh, previously, we also have a feature called uh, all or none, means you know my order should be matched fully or not, or not matched at all. Uh, so with combining these two features, it's really easy to uh, do like uh, trustless and secure OTC trading. In Looping 3.5, um, we have already implemented something called um, uh, parallel transfers, which means um, the transfer is not really depends on the previous one uh, by using a nonce. Uh, if you want, you can still use a nonce and then require the nonce is greater than the previous transfer. But sometimes um, some, some scenario require you to send out a bunch of transfers uh, in one batch and you want all those transfers to be successful regardless which of those transfers you know, goes, goes first or after another. So the, the sequence of those uh, transfers in that batch doesn't really matter. Uh, this is previously impossible, but uh, we have made it possible in 3.6. Uh, the dual authoring can even allow you to send a tra transfer some token to a recipient without even knowing the recipient's address or account ID. You can just sign a transfer and send the transfer data to the recipient and then allow the recipient to provide the address and sign that transfer again. And that transfer is guaranteed not to uh, be able to uh, be used by another recipient. So you have a guarantee uh, for uh, that security. We call that uh, uh, technology called dual authoring, um, which is a pretty nice, uh, uh, nice thing uh, to, to take a look. With 3.6, we also enable people to deposit to any other address and withdraw your own money to any other address on layer one. So with this feature, you know, we can do cross layer uh, any token, uh, to any, uh, sorry, any address to any address transfers. So uh, the boundary between layers is really now minimized. We hope with this feature, um, we can um, you know, uh, make our own wallet uh, to be able to uh, help our users to migrate all those transfers to layer two instead of you know, costing more money, uh, paying more gas on layer one. Sorry about the, the slides, those numbers are somehow uh, in, incorrect. So those are the major features that we have in 3.6. Uh, but we also have some challenges uh, going forward. So uh, our, our Looping 3.6 is going to be launched in Q4. Uh, so those are other challenges, the first one we still need to run a trusted setup ceremony because as I said, we are using the same technical stack. We use, we use LibSnark and eSnark and those libraries require us to run a setup once we modify the circuit code. 
uh, that's boring. But uh, I think going forward, after this release, we are going to migrate to something uh, cooler, um, either using universal setup or using some technology that doesn't require trusted setup at all. Also, you know, during this migration from 3.1 to 3.6, we encountered an uh, anticipated uh, challenge. We want to migrate all our users from the current rollup to the next one. And because those two rollups are not really compatible, I mean, the, the Merkle tree structures are different. So it's not easy. Uh, we haven't really gone through this yet. But we, we expect this is pretty uh, tedious and, and you know, error prone. So this is something we hope to uh, be able to solve in the next release. Uh, also, we also, we also have some other ideas that we think can be implemented uh, in another rollup. We don't want to make this single rollup more complex. Uh, you know, more complex means more, it's more error prone, it's more like a cost, to, uh, for example, to, to audit. So we have, I think other team may have the same, uh, you know, uh, idea to implement something uh, in a rollup. So we come to this interoperability issue. We hope that people can move around their asset between rollups without really interacting with uh, uh, the layer one. Otherwise, you can do a withdrawal, you can then do a deposit. But we want to make sure the roll-up interaction uh, is, there's no layer one transaction and the, uh, the delay is really minimized. We don't have that solution yet. So hopefully, you know, if some other team have great ideas, we would like to work a partner with, um, hopefully we can get this solved. Also, the current relayer of mine, uh, of my team, uh, is really centralized and it's not open. For example, um, a couple of days ago, our relayer had some issue, so you know our DEX stopped running. So that's something we really hope to solve in the near future. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to be decentralized and in the meanwhile uh, to provide really high. Uh, uh, throughput with uh, very small latency. Uh, it's hard. Uh, besides all these technical challenges, we also have this issue of user education, right? We want to bring layer two solutions to our user, but now we need to tell them what layer two is, what layer two means to them, uh, why there are multiple layer twos in, instead of just one layer two solution. Uh, as we are working on the wallet, we feel um, it needs, we need some time to figure out how to present a technical solution to our end user who are not supposed to learn um, all those technical details. Uh, we need somehow, you know, uh, make sure the user experience is uh, intuitive and, and easy uh, to, to understand. So that's our um, what we are working on in terms of Blueprint 3.6. Uh, I hope we can, you know, work with developers in Ethereum ecosystem to make layer two solutions uh, more popular uh, among our, uh, um, uh, among the entire community and our users. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for AdCon, uh, Ethereum Foundation, and a lot of people have helped us to make uh, CK rollup possible for Loopin. Thank you.